You know, there are two women's narratives here uh, in the book. One is the oppression side and how women uh, um, are controlled. Um, but the other is there are these four women who are close friends. There's a sisterhood of women, as it were. And one of the bonds between them is that they have never been taught to self-efface. You know, they express their views. So um, in that uh, setup, uh, there is this um, discussion about the fact that that women are entitled to sexual satisfaction, which you know they probably through history have mm. has been ignored. Sex has been a man's. Uh, sport or prerogative. <laughs> sport or is probably <laughs> more accurate. Yes, mm. I mean the husband's mm. right and so mm. on. So uh, that aspect is there too. So we have two kinds of women, the very, uh, the determinedly uh, uh, independent woman who knows her mind and, uh, and does not give in to this. And the other side is the women who are responding to uh, a Baba's call among us that Hindu women must have at least five children, at least five children. This is actually the reverse of the um, uh, propaganda that uh, uh, Hindus have two children and Muslims have five and they might outnumber us. So Yes, so, um, the, so to make the Hindu population grow. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention this um, caste already, of course, uh, has a spatial division in India, uh, especially uh, in rural India, but um, increasingly we're seeing this in our uh, metros as well, that if you are a Muslim, for example, you might find it uh, quite hard to, to rent a place. But uh, in your novel, uh, 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 what we hope will not happen in the immediate future. There is complete ghettoization, and uh, it's sort of like little um, regions, uh, little areas which are kept aside for the Muslims. Um, they have to, if they come to the mainstream areas, they have to pr have Hindu names and so on. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I wanted you to describe some of um, this, which is. Half of it is here. Uh, if you're a pessimist, you'll say three fourths of it is here. Uh, yeah. uh, but you actually take it uh, the entire way, and that is that is the warning. That what might happen? Yes. Um, yeah, as a story is a story. So one thing comes out of another. But, but the story is very close to reality, which is why we have to take it seriously. Mm. All stories mm. come out of reality, but they mm. go their own way. Mm. Actually, I don't know if that would happen. I really don't. That is, of course, uh, my imagination. But the fact is that enough is happening. Uh, in the emergency of 1975, we knew that we're in a dictatorship because the opposition had been put in jail. Uh, all debate had been crushed. Um, the Constitution had been amended to take away our right to life and liberty. So it was uh, a clear dictatorship. And we knew exactly the situation we were in. Now, today, it's much more dangerous because all that is happening under the guise of democracy. We are told we're a democracy, mm -hmm. and yet those very things are happening, and much worse is happening, as I said earlier. Mob lynchings, public murders, and so on are going on, and uh, the killers are not even apprehended or convicted. So it's a, it's a much, much worse situation than it ever has been. Um, I wanted actually to ask you uh, 
to speak to uh, uh, our young people, uh, a, a part of the audience, uh, about the way forward. What, what should we do as not just writers and, uh, or lawyers or uh, you know, parliamentarians, but as citizens, uh, where do you see uh, calls for hope? What is the call you would give out? Um, you know, in India, we <clears throat> are now seeing uh, uprisings on the part of different groups of citizens from different areas of life, from scientists, from historians, filmmakers, movie stars, women, Dalits, all these people are reacting to this situation. But the communication which is happening between class and mass is significant also. Uh, we have uh, a number of civil servants who are taking part in what they call a mohabbat ka safar, a love journey, journey of love from the Northeast uh, to Gandhiji's ashram in Gujarat, which is uh, uh, making common cause with people who have suffered horribly in past massacres and present rapes and killings which are going on. These are all signs of, of hope and signs of giving courage uh, to people who've suffered. And apart from that, uh, there are the, the, the class we call artists and writers is a very obstinate bunch of people. Mm. They will not keep quiet. So we will speak at every opportunity about what is happening and uh, some of uh, great rationalists uh, a very fine journalist has recently been murdered. Three rationalists before that have been murdered. Other writers have been hounded. One writer had a threat that his fingers would be cut off if he continued to write, as he did. All this is going on. We don't care. We are going to keep doing what has to be done because this society which since independence has been a society which has given freedom not only of expression, but of religion, of the way to eat, the way to live, the way to dress, whom to fall in love with. All these have been our rights as Indians. We are not giving them up. Quite right. Um, let's uh, revisit 2015. Uh, Nainthara, when all of us um, were talking almost every day and uh, uh, I recall it because it was a moment when it wasn't just writers and academics and historians and filmmakers but also scientists uh, which I thought was very important um, that everyone came together to say that as a gesture of protest uh, we will return our uh, state awards and uh, in protest against not just the uh, murder of the rationalists, this was soon after Kalburgi was killed, but also a clerk if you remember and since then there have been several other murders. So um, what are the ways, there's a young uh, 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 person in the audience who's asked what are the ways to defeat Parivar of hate and those murdering writers and reformists and in answer I thought perhaps you could revisit that um, moment and uh, what are the ways in which we can actually reinvent that? I think I partly answered that by the last yes, um, yes. Uh, conversation we had, mm. which is that all these movements are going on by various people. Um, I didn't mention Tista Setelwad for mm. one, who's fighting, still fighting, for the victims of the Gujarat riots. That's right. Um, it's, it's doing, uh, actually taking on uh, the existing uh, horrors which confront us and trying to do something about them which can, 
you know, which convinces those people who've suffered that something is being done to help us and mm -hmm. which creates a climate of love um, uh, in, a, in a vitriolic climate of hate. And also restores um, the uh, uh, ideology with which uh, the country was created because you have always yes. pointed out that <laughs> it's the prevailing ideology which is behind uh, all these uh, numerous changes uh, affecting every aspect of our lives today. That's right. You know, we can't do it as dramatically as, as Mahatma Gandhi did in his time. His creation of, of uh, communication and love was by taking off his clothes and to live half naked for the rest of his life because that was the way uh, the common Indian lived. He didn't have clothes. So Gandhiji went about in a langot for the rest of his life. And of course, by the practice of abolishing untouchability, which was a huge effort, which still needs to be done in many quarters. So uh, we cannot go to those dramatic extremes. But in many ways, of proving our solidarity with our neighbor, a Muslim neighbor or a Christian neighbor, anybody who's in trouble uh, uh, for not being a Hindutva advocate uh, and who needs help, we should give what help we can, either in the way of speaking for them or in terms of actual assistance, legal, as happens with many people. Mm -hmm. And we have many fine legal minds who are in the fray right now. Um, one of my legal friends um, was telling me, Vrinda Grover, that a hundred lawyers have decided to unite to defend such cases. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, to struggle to make India inclusive again. To, and, to keep mm. it inclusive. We are inclusive. Whatever has been said about Hindutva or Hindu Rashtra, we are not yet a Hindu Rashtra. We are a secular democratic republic. We still are, and that is the way that we plan to remain. I think that's, that's exactly the uh, message we should uh, end with. Thank you so much, uh, Nayantara, for joining us. And onward to holding on to our inclusive India. Thank you so Inshallah. much for joining us. <laughs>